Welcome to What Is Your Cat Reading? The show that asks the question, What is your cat reading? Today we'll hear from some fantastic felines about what they are reading currently, and we will also be able to enjoy a story, so stick around for that. Let's get started, shall we? Is it, is it doing? Hello, my name is Miles, and I'm reading The Old Man and the Sea. It's a story about fish, and it makes me feel hungry, because I like fish. But the boy can't catch the marlin, and that's sad. But really, it's just a rehashing of Moby Dick. That's what we're looking at here. The old man and the she and me. Hello, my name is Bree, and I am reading The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. It is also known lately as Bridgerton. However, I think that books are clearly better than TV. Thank you. The p-value for any hypothesis test is the alpha level at which we would be indifferent between accepting or rejecting H0 given the sample data at hand. That is, the p-value is the alpha level at which the given value of the test statistic, such as t, is on the borderline between acceptance and rejection regions. Hi, I'm Vera. I'm reading Gossip Girl. It makes me wish I lived on the Upper East Side. <sighs> I guess Cedar Rapids is fine for now. Hi, my name is Mina, and I am currently reading Captain Underpants. So much fun, and it just makes me laugh all the time, and the drawings are so cool. It just makes me feel so excited, and you should definitely read it too. Oh, sorry. My name's Todd, and lately I've been reading Flowers for Algernon, or Algernon. There seems to be a debate online about how you say it. It's kind of a moody book, and there are parts of it I don't really dig, but Charles Gordon clearly didn't deserve to be done dirty like that. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend. It's very, you know, emotional. A lot of people wouldn't get that, but... As long as you're willing to give it a shot, yeah, go for it, or whatever. Hey, I'm Ellie. I'm reading Six of Crows. There's a heist, uh, some thieves, a dark-haired stranger, and murder. All my favorite things. You should read it, too. If you're cool. Hello, my name is Diego, and lately I've been dabbling into Don Quixote. It's a charming little read, very allegorical, a little spicy, although I still can't quite get over what he has against windmills. I, you, you'd get it if you read it, and I don't want to spoil anything. It's, it's a good book. I, I recommend. Ciao. Hello, I am Maverick. And hello, I am Adelaide. And today we will talk about Game of Thrones. It's a very good book. If you have a favorite character, do not get attached. Because they die. So, sorry, spoiler, they die. And then you find a new favorite character. And then they die too. And then you find another favorite character. And then they die. Also, it is very cold. Da. I'm William Wallace, and I've been reading The Witcher. So far, it's been a really exciting adventure, and I hope to see Geralt of Rivia succeed in all his endeavors. I also love Roach. He's actually a really big part in the book. I recommend it. And now for a story. The Tale of Tom Kitten by Beatrix Potter. Copyright 1907, dedicated to all pickles, 
especially those that get upon my garden wall. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens, and their names were Mittens, Tom Kitten, and Moppet. They had dear little fur coats of their own, and they tumbled about the doorstep and played in the dust. But one day their mother, Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit, expected friends to tea, so she fetched the kittens indoors to wash and dress them before the fine company arrived. First she scrubbed their faces. This one is Moppet. Then she brushed their fur. This one is Mittens. Then she combed their tails and whiskers. This is Tom Kitten. Tom was very naughty and he scratched. Mrs. Tabitha dressed Moppet and Mittens in clean pinafores and tuckers. And then she took all sorts of elegant, uncomfortable clothes out of the chest of drawers in order to dress up her son, Thomas. Tom Kitten was very fat and he had grown several buttons burst off. His mother sewed them on again. When the three kittens were ready, Mrs. Tabitha unwisely turned them out into the garden to be out for a while while she made hot buttered toast. Now keep your frocks clean, children. You must walk on your hind legs, keep away from the dirty ash pit, and from Sally Henny Penny, and from the pigsty and the puddle ducks. Moppet and Mittens walked down the garden path unsteadily. Presently they trod upon their pinafores and fell on their noses. When they stood up, there were several green smears. Let us climb up the rockery and sit on the garden wall, said Moppet. They turned their pinafores back to front and went up with a skip and a jump. Moppet's white tucker fell down into the road. Tom Kitten was quite unable to jump when walking upon his hind legs and trousers. He came up the rockery by degrees, breaking the ferns and shedding buttons right and left. He was all in pieces when he reached the top of the wall. Moppet and Mittens tried to pull him together. His hat fell off and the rest of his buttons burst. While they were in difficulties, there was a pit-pat-paddle-pat, pat, and then three puddle ducks came along the hard high road, marching one behind the other, and doing the goose step pit-pat-paddle-pat, pit-pat-waddle-pat. Pat. They stopped and stood in a row, and stared up at the kittens. They had very small eyes and looked surprised. Then the two duck birds, Rebecca and Jemima Puddle Duck, picked up the hat and tucker and put them on. Mittens laughed so hard that she fell off the wall. Moppet and Tom descended after her. The pinafores and all the rest of Tom's clothes came off on the way down. Come, Mr. Drake Puddle Duck, said Moppet, come and help us dress him. Come and button up Tom. Mr. Drake Puddle Duck advanced in a slow sideways manner and picked up the various articles. But he put them on himself. They fitted him worse than they fit Tom Kitten. It's a very fine morning, said Mr. Puddle Duck. And he and Jemima and Rebecca Puddle Duck set off up the road, keeping step. Pit, pat, paddle, pat. Pit, pat, waddle, pat. Then Tabitha Twitchit came down the garden and found her kittens on the wall with no clothes on. She pulled them off the wall and took them back to the house. My friends will arrive in a minute and you are not fit to be seen. I am affronted, said Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit. She sent them upstairs and I'm sorry to say she told her friends that they were in bed with the measles, which was not true. Quite the contrary. They were not in bed, not in the least. Somehow, there were very extraordinary noises overhead, which disturbed the dignity and repose of the tea party. And I think that someday I shall make another larger book to tell you more about Tom Kitten. As for the Puddle Ducks, they went into the pond. The clothes all came off directly because there were no buttons. And Mr. Drake Puddle Duck and Jemima and Rebecca have been looking for them ever since. The end. This has been What is Your Cat Reading? We do ask that you submit What is Your Pet Reading? Even though cats are clearly better, we do accept all submissions. 
show us what your pet is reading in the comments below.